where you're doing stone scribe foundations, everybody always asks, well, how do you position the stones and the scribes to exactly where it needs to be? Well, it doesn't work that way. You kind of work the other way. First, you set up the stones where they need to be. Then you scribe the post to where the hypothetical or nominal locations of those crosshairs need to be. So the corners of the building and then any posts that need to be in the middle, such as this one's in the middle. Then you scribe your post to that. And now we're on the next step, which is we have to cut the joinery on there. So usually it's just a tenon that's sticking out. So in this case, we're marking level reference points on every single one of those posts. And so this is my super high tech water level. <laughs> it's uh, just a bucket, five gallon bucket that I filled about halfway with water and I have a piece of Tigon tubing. What I ended up doing was I siphoned off some of the water, let it drain out the other end, and then I just raised the, the tubing and it's perfectly primed. So as long as I don't lose that prime, I can continue to use that, that line. One thing also that you need to watch out for is water evaporating. So if this water level changes at all in here, uh, it can affect the level reference line. So it's not gonna happen in a matter of minutes. It'll happen throughout the course of a day or multiple days. So uh, what I suggest is that whenever you're absolutely ready to do this, do it within a, a short period of time. What we're using this for is essentially to find a level reference plane. And that reference line, the one that I've decided to, to choose is gonna be the very top of the tenon. Then we come down about three and a half inches, which is the shoulder of those tenons. And that's where our sill plates are gonna sit on. Okay, so I haven't marked this face at all with this water level, but as you can see, what's important here is that I have a mark on my, my tubing. So that's like an permanent marker or whatever. And as you can see, the water level's down here. It's not gonna stay constant. It's gonna move as you move this tubing up and down. And just be careful because if you, if you do go too far down, the water is gonna shoot out at the top and then you're gonna lose that, um, that reference water level and then you'll have to mark everything from zero. So just be, just be aware of that. So to do this, you can see the water levels down here. I have to bring that mark down. And you're like, well, why does it really matter? And it, in fact, it does matter because you're changing the water level in the bucket. Not very much, but enough to make a difference. So here we are. I have to match the water level to that line. As I can see, coming down just a little bit. There we go. And so there's a number of ways that you can go about this from here is that you can, one of the ways is that you can use the center lines to get that line completely flat across. While the post, another way is that while the post is sitting here perfectly vertical, then you can come with a level, a, a torpedo level or like a big uh, level and mark perfectly level lines at those points and then connect them all around, essentially creating that reference plane. The way that we've done it is that these lines are perfectly flat, um, perpendicular to each other. So this one and the one on the back creates a plane and the one horizontal, the one on this face and this face create another plane and those two are perfectly perpendicular to each other. So I'm pretty confident that I can get the correct joinery by just referencing those lines. Now we're gonna go to the other posts and mark those same points and then we'll be able to cut our joinery.